how much are we spending on Datadog and monitoring. So we would look like into into the Datadog piece, but no one really looks, looks into like, okay, how much are you spending on the AWS side for sending data to, to Datadog, right? So actually we had to combine these, these two together. But yeah, it was, uh, I think it was like six months ago-ish when uh, I ran into the article. Uh, I think it was, uh, it's, it's an article from Datadog where they mentioned like there is an alternative way how we can ship the, the metrics from CloudWatch to, to Datadog. And they talked about the, the push-based approach instead of the, the pool-based one. But what was interesting, they, they did not really talk about cost, at least not in the terms of when they would say like this would be cheaper. They actually said like, this is likely going to be more expensive. So they only mentioned that like this is a solution that you should use uh, for lowering the, the latency. Sort of like there is lower delay between like seeing the, the metrics in Datadog compared to how you would see them in CloudWatch. But since uh, we, we knew that like we wanted to produce cost, we said like, let's give it a try. Let's see like how much expensive it would be. And it actually, it ended up saving, I think it was like 70, 80% of, uh, of, of the cost that we paid before on the uh, on this specific API call. Um, and actually it's uh, it almost fully eliminated the cost for it, but actually it, it, it uh, introduced another cost and that was for, I think it was, it's basically for sending the data using the, the CloudWatch metric streams, because there's also something like the, the AWS is charging for. So that's why we did not manage to save fully like 100%, still 70 to 80% is, is a massive saving. But what was interesting there that like we actually had to play around with it a little bit because for some integrations, uh, I think it was one of them was a load balancer, we would actually pay more using the push method compared to the pull method. And I think it depends a lot on how many resources you have and how much metrics those resources are provided. And the most expensive one was the databases, uh, because for each database is loads of metrics, and there we don't even look at all of them. So for us, it was quite easy to say, well, we are interested in these five to 10 different metrics types. So those are the ones we want in Datadog. The others, we don't really care about. And this, this push-based method actually allows you to select which are the metrics you are interested in. So you can select like the whole like namespace. So it can be like namespace um, ALB, it can be namespace RDS, but you can also specify the exact uh, metrics that, that you want to ingest. And I think thanks to that, like we, we, we managed to save quite a lot of money. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really elegant solution. And, and as you said, I mean, um, it's, it's not the sort of thing where one size fits all. Uh, it doesn't work for every situation, but um, what I really liked about it as well was uh, what you just pointed out where you could tune the data you're sending to Datadog instead of them just taking everything, um, everything obviously being relative here, but um, you, you're able to say, we only worry about these databases and therefore we only want to pay for monitoring those databases, right? Um, so I think it's a, a nice benefit that you've got.